Ah, well, welcome into this part three of the Photoshop in 30 Seconds tutorial on the pen tool, one of the most powerful tools in Photoshop. If you missed yesterday or the day before's tutorials, well, check out my channel, hunt them down. It's going to have the same title as this tutorial, but instead of part three, it'll part, be part one and part two. This is part of a probably three or four, maybe even five part series on the pen tool, and I'm just kind of going over things as it comes to my mind. I haven't planned it out. It's all just ad-libbing, so there's going to be some overlap. Let's talk about creating complex paths and how you actually put some of the principles we've talked about in the past tutorials into practice, how we take some of those tips and tricks we learned earlier and actually apply them to here, cutting out or creating a selection or path around the Eiffel Tower. So let's go ahead and grab the pen tool. Of course, we can draw with a shape. I don't want to do that. I want to just make a path. I can always convert my path to a selection, a mask, or a shape later on. Let's zoom in here uh, to the Eiffel Tower, and we'll just begin at this corner. So grab the pen tool, and we're going to begin by clicking and adding our path. Now we have rubber band turned on, right? So we have we can see where our path is going. And I'm going to click here to place my other point, but I'm going to click and I'm going to hold and I'm going to pull down or I'm going to pull up, excuse me. And that's going to you can see drag out these tangent handles. But the problem is I can't quite get an exact curve. You can see I just made the curve, but it's not quite let me load it up again. The curve is not quite perfect. You can see there's a part of the Eiffel Tower it's going to cut off. Well, that's because we need to begin making the curve before we even begin making the path. Let's delete that uh, instance of, the, of, of a work path and be begin a brand new work path. I'm going to click to place an anchor point, but I'm not going to let go of my click. I'm going to drag a tangent handle along the area I want to curve until kind of the curve begins to break away. So maybe like, like right about there. Then I'm going to place another point right up here and I'm going to pull down or I'm going to pull up excuse me and I'm going to make that complete curve you can see I now have a curve that follows the edge of the Eiffel Tower now here I've got a problem I can see with the rubber band tool I can't flip my path around and get up around this little rounded edge well I can defeat this by holding down my alt or option key and clicking on that path it's gonna suck the one tangent handle back in and I can click and drag right around that curve Hold down my Alter Option key, get that in, and just make my straight edge bits of selection, right? This is all pretty straightforward stuff. We're just clicking, making straight lines, all right? We're not going to worry about this stuff down in here. We're going to pretend like that doesn't exist. Uh, if we want to be perfectionist, we can go right around this corner. So I'll click, and I'll drag right around the corner. And then, of course, in order to have a perfectly straight up and down line going up from this little area, it's going to be difficult for you to see here. I need to hold my Alter Option key and click on that little anchor point that I placed. All right, let's do the same thing for the other curve. Alt or Option, so we have a nice perfectly straight line running out from this to right about here. All right, now check this out. So here we're, we have a little bit of a curve again. We need a very, very subtle curve. So I've already placed my anchor point, and in fact, like I didn't want to place my anchor point and then begin pulling up toward this curve because you can see it really messes up my path down here. Well, what do we do? What we do is we place the anchor point, and now you can hold down the Alter Option key again and drag a fresh tangent handle just out in the direction you wish to go. So you can see I drag that right out. And I maybe pull back just a little bit, and we have the nice subtle curve just like we need it. And now hit the Alt or Option, hold the Alt or Option key, drag that one tangent handle back in, make all of our straight edges just like this. Right? We've got another curve now, so I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key. I'm going to pull up until I just get past the break in the curve. Right? We talked about this before, something like that. And then I'm going to place my anchor handle right up there. I'm going to pull back on it until I have as close to a perfect selection as I can get, or as close to a perfect path as I can get, I should say. We just want it to follow the edge of the Eiffel Tower. And then I'm just going to pull this right up and around. All right, you still following me? You still following me? Let's just go... Oops, I didn't take that quite high enough. There we go, something like that. I'm cutting off a little piece of it. Don't worry about that. We're going to come straight across here. We can go all the way up to the point. We can perfectly cut out the... Whoops, we can... I'm accidentally right-clicking. We can perfectly cut out the uh, little radio antenna if we like. I'm not going to take the time to do that here. We're just going to get this done. All right, you can see. Straight lines. Eh, I probably shouldn't make that a straight line. Let's adjust that. There we go. Just like that. Just come right around there. All right, so now again, we have to head down uh, the Eiffel Tower. So I'm going to hold, I'm going to zoom out one more. I'm going to hold down my Alter Option key. I'm going to drag that tangent handle out until it gets past like the break in the curve. And I'm going to place my other anchor point way down here. 
I'm going to pull back until the, the path lines up perfectly with the edge of whatever I'm uh, conforming to. Now I need to hold down the Alt or Option key pull, whoop, to pull that uh, tangent handle back inward. There we go. We got a straight line. Got another straight, got another straight line if I can learn not to right click. Another straight line right there. Looks like we have a little tiny bit of a curve here, so let's pull a tangent handle out. Working with a tangent handle on both ends, like I'm doing here, because of course you could just click and try to get the curve perfect like this, right? Something like that, and that actually works for there. But generally speaking, you're always going to have best results by dragging a tangent handle out of the beginning anchor point as well as running to an anchor point where you're pulling on that tangent handle, a new tangent handle as well. Hold on the Alt or Option key to suck that tangent handle back in. Boom. Let's just go around this corner quickly. I'm not going to not going to make a curve if I can stop right clicking. I'm, I'm using the trackpad of my, my MacBook, so it's giving me some, some issues here. There we go. Another straight line. Right, we're just going to come right around this. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, you son of a gun. There we go. Boom. All right, now we have a little bit of a tighter curve here, so I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull an anchor, a uh, tangent handle, excuse me, out to about right there. I'm going to place my point there. I'm going to pull it. See, we got to have a nice swooping curve. Hold down my Alt or Option key and select that tangent handle. Now we need to pull another tangent handle out of here because we have a pretty drastic curve coming here down to the bottom of uh, the Eiffel Tower. All right, so we're going to try to bring it in and get it pretty close to being perfect. All right, now that we've done all that, we can just draw wherever we want or make a path wherever we want out here in the gray. Let's zoom in over here. And we can join this to our uh, our initial path. Now, notice what happens. Because the initial anchor point of our path has tangent handles being pulled out of it, you see the tangent handle coming out and shooting to the left is going to affect this piece of path we join. It doesn't do anything for our image in this case, but it is good to know. If you want to close a path off and not have that tangent handle affect you, you hold down the magic hotkey, which this entire time has been the Alt or Option key. So hold down the Alt or Option key and just click to join the path, and it's going to ignore the tangent handle or push that tangent handle back in just on the side from which or to which you're joining. So you can see now we have this path wrapping up and around the Eiffel Tower. We go to the Paths panel, and boom, we have that work path. We can name it. Uh, let's just name it Tower. All right, so we've got that great. Now we can do a number of things with uh, this path. We can convert this now to a shape layer if we like. We could also apply this as a vector mask to this background image. You can do that by jumping over to the Paths panel, and you can choose uh, the, well, you probably need to unlock the background layer, right? Um, we can choose to fill this with a solid color, right? And if we go back, we've just filled it on the background layer. I actually didn't need to unlock for that. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, we can just stroke the path. It's going to stroke the path with whatever brush you have selected. So I've got a very soft edge 1500 pixel brush selected. So if I go with something a little bit smaller and then I choose to stroke the edge with that, you can see we get a nice little outline. Um, we can do all kinds of things. You can load it as a selection by hitting this little icon here on the bottom of the Paths panel, or as we've talked about before, the hotkey Command Return, that'd be Control Enter on the PC, right? It doesn't get rid of the path. If you click off of the path, the path doesn't get deleted. You just don't have it selected in the Paths panel. You can always go back to the Paths panel, select that path again. Now, here's something that we can do. We can go Layer, New Fill Layer, Solid Color, and this is going to create a, you can see a color filled layer that's using this path as a mask. So we can hit OK. And we've got a nice little red Eiffel Tower. If we want to change the color of the Eiffel Tower, well, Alt, Backspace, or Option, Delete, and it's going to fill that with your foreground color. So if my foreground color is blue, you can see Option, Delete, boom, and we have a blue Eiffel Tower. You can also double click on the layer thumbnail and choose whatever color you like. Okay, that's all pretty cool stuff. Um, you can use the Path Selection tool, right? Select it, and I believe you should be able to apply a stroke to it as well. Let's go with like a giant yellow stroke okay you can see we've got a hundred point stroke now applied to this so there's all kinds of different things you can do um, for the most part what you're going to be doing is none of the the shape well some of the shape layer stuff you will probably be doing if you select your path you'll be doing a little bit of uh, creating vector masks with the current path 
Um, but for the most part, you'll be using this to generate a selection. So you can do something like mask out the sky in this picture and replace it with maybe like a nighttime starry sky. So we can hit command return, that'd be control enter on the PC, and then just simply hit the mask icon at the base of the layers panel, and boom, we've masked away all the sky. Obviously, you're going to want to go in and clean up the little bits and pieces you have near the edges, but You've created a mask using a selection which was, uh, which basically came from a path that we created. But we were able to get that precision using the pen tool. Now, obviously, you could say, oh, well, I would just use quick selection or something like that. Okay, I understand. And the quick selection is great and things like that. But the path tool allows you to go in and with like the direct selection tool, you're always able to edit your path right? Let's say we decide the Eiffel Tower is actually going to be a bit taller. You can go in and edit it and move things around I'm just using my arrow keys and the direct selection tool here and just highlighting specific anchor points on the path. So having a path allows you to do all kinds of things. It's a vector path. It's saved here in your document. Um, it can be a really great way to get very clean edged selections. Obviously, not only can you use a regular layer mask, you can use a vector mask, which can be edited right there on the layer. Uh, but we're going to get into more of that stuff in part four and five of this tutorial as well. So for the pen tool and making complex selections with the pen tool in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.